Okay, so um, hopefully you found um, both Dave and I's justifications for why we believe gods don't exist at least somewhat helpful. Um, again, this isn't an absolute truth claim. It's why we think gods don't exist. Okay, why we think they are unlikely. And let us know if there's anything that you'd like us to expand on in the future or if there's anything that you don't think quite works. But remember, it's not just a single piece of an argument. It's all those little bits fit in to make the puzzle. And that's why we believe gods don't exist. Now, Greg, he kindly put his justification in earlier. He said that his burden of proof for disbelieving God exists is a logical justification for reasonable non-belief. And it's 10 criteria one can use to assert God most likely doesn't exist. So God is never seen, detected or objectively verified. So that's basically the divine hiddenness. Um, an adequate and meanif meaningful definition of God is never provided. Yep. So that's, again, another one of the ours that we said. It's um, a demonstrable null hypothesis is never presented and it's not falsifi falsifiable. Uh, there is no phenomenon best explained by God. I mean, that's going back to what we were saying about how most supernatural claims end up being explained through natural means, whereas no natural claim ends up being explained by supernatural. Um, God strongly resembles things that aren't real. Again, that's another one that you brought up, Dave. Uh, did, did he take your notes? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he's just someone who's actually thought about his uh, position quite well. Uh, there are plausible explanations for why the God concept originated rather than God existing. Again, that's what we were talking about with uh, evolution and assigning agency and the argument from psychology. Um, nearly all arguments for the existence of God invoke an appeal to mystery or the unknown or, you know, as, as I was saying, like a God of the gaps or anything like that. I, I, he got both of our notes. Uh, <laughs> uh, the God hypothesis does not adequately explain any great mystery of the universe. Um, I'd say it does not adequately account for. I suppose you could say it explains in the sense that if it's a supernatural being that can do anything. I get what he's saying there, though. Um Methodologies provided to experience God are ineffective, inconclusive, and purely subjective. Uh, yeah, that's right. I mean, it's it's like I was saying about how so many different people have different experience of God's, how their testimony, and um, if you want to go further, it's like when some people um, babble in tongues and different people see different gods and it's usually the gods that they've been brought up with or the gods of their country and all of a sudden they see them and uh, again so though those uh experiences are definitely inconclusive um and number 10 the absence of good reasons to believe god exists is a good reason to lack belief in god until one or more of these categories change it is reasonable to put god in the list of non-existing things right along with unicorns telepathy and ghosts yeah, I mean, I'd say that's a pretty good list, actually, Greg. Um, nice one. You've summarised what we said quite concisely, and it took me two minutes to read it, whereas it probably took us an hour to go through hours. <laughs> I'm we had other stuff to cover. Of course we did, of course we did. But I think that's definitely a good snip for us to cut out actually uh, and put up there um is one of our highlights for anyone who wants a, a quick and easy reference um those were uh greg's reasons that he disbelieves in gods so yeah nice one greg thank you for those 